you understand the basic structure of an atom, everything else that you do in chemistry will make a lot more sense. So the mo most important thing to start off with is the fact that atoms make up everything. So every single material and substance on this planet is made of atoms. This pen is made of atoms. My hand is made of atoms. This piece of paper is made of atoms. Everything in this world is made up of atoms. And they are like the building blocks of everything. There are, are over a hundred different types of atom and we call these elements and these are displayed in the periodic table here. For example the smallest atom that you can get is hydrogen and then as the elements go from left to right the atom size gets bigger and we'll explain why in a minute. So all of these are displayed on the periodic table and there are over a hundred different types of atoms which we call elements. We'll come back to this in just a minute. But we need to know what atoms are made up of and there are three um, basic components of an atom. The first one is the proton. Then we have the electron and the neutron. Now these are like the subatomic particles, the even smaller bits which are inside the atom. So if we were rep to represent an atom as a diagram we would show some particles in the middle this is the nucleus of the atom okay like the middle of the atom and that contains the protons and the neutrons all in the middle of the atom then the outside of the atom is where we find the electrons and the electrons go around in what we call electron shells around the outside of the atom and these electrons are represented as normally crosses or sometimes you'll see them as little dots on the electron shells In the middle, I've represented at the moment the protons as a plus symbol and the neutrons as just a circle. And we'll come back to why in a minute. So the basic structure of an atom is the nucleus in the middle containing the protons and the neutrons and the electrons. They sit in these electron shells or energy levels around the outside of the atom. So if you're a bigger atom you're going to have more protons and electrons and neutrons in your um, structure. You can have more energy levels spiralling outwards and your nucleus is going to be larger as well. First important thing to get our heads around is the charge of each of these subatomic particles. Now some of these particles are charged and others are not. So the proton in the nucleus has a positive charge which we write, we can't just write plus, we have to write plus one. Positive charge, so P for proton, P for positive. The electrons around the outside have a negative charge of minus one. Now the one's important because it means that the plus one of a proton is cancelled out by the negative one of an electron. So if you have a plus one and a negative one together, so a proton and an electron together, those charges cancel each other out. 
A neutron, however, in the nucleus again, is neutral. So neut for neutron, neutral. So a neutron has no charge. Now coming on to the mass of these subatomic particles, we call it the relative mass because that just means compared with each other, what are the masses on these particles. Now in the nucleus, that is where the mass is concentrated. So the protons and neutrons in the nucleus both have essentially the same mass. So we say they have a relative mass of one because that just means that they've got the same mass as each other. All of this mass is concentrated in the middle of the atom. The electrons around the outside have such a small mass in comparison that we don't even give them a number. We just write very small. So you need to get this bit in your heads first of all, that the mass is concentrated in the middle of the atom. Protons and neutrons have the same mass. And the, you need to get your head around the charges as well. Proton is the positively charged particle, plus one. Electrons around the outside are the negatively charged particles, minus one, and the neutron has no charge at all. So this is the basic structure of the atom. We now need to really link that to how these different types of atoms, the elements, are displayed in the periodic table. So the periodic table lists all of the elements essentially in size order. So as you go from left to right, you're, cre you're increasing in mass. Now the key tells you that we've got the relative atomic mass, we've got the atomic or proton number, and these are the two numbers that you see. So in this case it's telling you that the top number is the mass, and that the bottom number is the atomic or proton number. Now this is really important. The proton number gives you a little hint as to what that's going to tell you about. This tells you how many protons that there are in the atom. The mass number tells you the mass of the atom. Now, because we said before on our previous sheet that the protons and neutrons are the sub subatomic particles with the mass, the mass number on the periodic table essentially tells you how many protons and neutrons together there are in the atom. So the mass number is the number of protons plus neutrons in the atom. Now we need to think about where we find out about the number of electrons in the atom. Now that comes from the idea that the atoms have no overall charge. And if we look at the subatomic particles that do have charge, we can see the plus one for the proton and the minus one for the electron. So we said that they cancel out. So if you get something that's positive, something that's negative, they cancel each other out. So if they have no overall charge, that means that atoms must have the same number of protons which are your plus charge or your positive charge as the same number of electrons. Which are your negative charge. So those two charges cancel each other out and the atom itself has no overall charge and that's really important because we can look at our periodic table and we know how many protons there are. So if we've said that there are the same number of protons 
as electrons, we can also use this number to tell us how many uh, electrons there are. So let's take one of the elements as an example. Here we're going to take um, sodium here, the metal in group one, as an example. Now sodium has an atomic mass of 23, which means the combination of protons and neutrons adds up to 23. It has a proton number of 11. That means that it has 11 protons and 11 electrons. So to calculate the number of neutrons in the atom, we'll have to do a calculation. So if we look at sodium, it has an atomic mass of 23 and a proton number of 11. So we know about this atom that it has 11 protons, because that's the proton number. Because we know the number of protons is the same as the number of electrons, we know that it also has 11 electrons. Now the neutrons is the trickier one because we have to do a little calculation. The top number is the mass. The two particles with mass are protons and neutrons. So to get the number of neutrons we need to do the atomic mass minus the atomic number. So we need to take the top number and subtract the bottom number from this. So we need to do 23 minus 11, which means that there are 12 neutrons in the atom of sodium. Sometimes we call this a pen number, protons, electrons and neutrons, just to help us work them out. So now just pause this video and have a go at working out the number of protons and electron neutrons in an oxygen atom. So if you looked at oxygen, you'd have found it on your periodic table and it would have had 16 as a mass number, 8 as a proton number. So we know that it has 8 protons, 8 electrons, and to work out the neutrons we do 16 minus 8, which is also 8 neutrons.